This propaganda hit an all-time high last year, and Illinois saw one of the biggest increases in the country. According to the Anti-Defamation League, the Midwest became a hot spot in Illinois. There were 152 incidents. That is a 100% increase. White supremacists held three events across the state last year. Racist propaganda increased 24% in Indiana and 48% in Wisconsin. So joining us to discuss their findings is David Goldenberg, ADL's Midwest director. Sir, thank you so much for joining us. Could we start off first by talking about the abundance of anti-Asian violence? Just yesterday in Atlanta, a man arrested for allegedly killing six Asian women saying though he didn't do it race was not a factor but we have seen such an increase in anti-Asian violence haven't we we have and let me start by saying that all of us at ADL and myself are maddened and heartbroken by another act of violence against the Asian American community and while we don't know the motive yet of last night's shootings in Atlanta we know though that attacks against the AAPI community are at an all-time high, um, are continuing to increase and have been increasing over the course of the last year. Why is this, do you believe? Well, we saw more than a year ago, starting with President Trump, scapegoating members of the Asian American community for being responsible for the spread of coronavirus, using racist and xenophobic and xenophobic terms, um, calling it, calling the, the uh, calling COVID a number of these racist terms that continue to perpetuate throughout society because he and others gave um, permission for it. And so we saw that occurring and we saw that increasing during last spring, during the summer. It seemed to lower down a little bit, but it has ramped up significantly in the last few months. And it really is incumbent upon all of us to speak out and to do something about it. Because hate against one community is hate against another. But right now, the Asian American community is being targeted and we need to stand up and speak out and help protect them. So propaganda, the events, those are up. What about actual violence? Have you tracked that as well? So we have not tracked necessarily violence um, statistically against Asian Americans. We know, though, that it's up from our partners in the Asian American community. Um, what we also know is that um, the rhetoric that we saw uh, in many ways around the election, around the pandemic, emboldened those who have these extreme views and those who have these racist and xenophobic and xenophobic and anti-Semitic views. Um, and many of them were taking action uh, in a violent way in through harassment uh, and through also intimidation. Mr. Goldenberg, how do we change this? After years and years and years of this, I know it's more prevalent now, but how do we change it? Well, in many ways, uh, the genie, shall we say, is out of the bottle in some ways, and we've got to figure out a way as a society to put it back in. There's a role that government plays in making sure that we have laws and hate crimes that protect people. We have a responsibility from an education perspective to address issues of ignorance, and we have a responsibility as a society to speak out, to share facts, to show strength when these incidents occur, and realizing that while it may not necessarily, while an incident did not target maybe my community or your community, that it's incumbent upon all of us to stand out, to stand up and speak out against this type of violence. Because when it becomes more and more socially unacceptable, and for some reason, some people think that it's become okay. 